Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Empyrean Galactic Survival Tutorials. My name is Rakuna. And I am Bart. Hey Bart. So today we're going to be talking about signal logic. Oh man, I hate those things. I know Bart, that's just a little too hard for your little brain. What did you say? Idiot says what? What? <laughs> exactly. Oh you little. So if you press your P button while on a base or on a ship, it'll take you to your control panel. Now, signal logic will mostly have to do over in this little tab. Now, to use a signal, you need an input and an output. Input will be an item which has a TX signal. Most commonly, there are going to be sensors and signals. Now, if you take that and you right click on it, you have a whole selection here of which you can choose. Now, for the beginning of the video, I'm just going to give you a little quick introduction with a lever. So I'm going to put that there and there you go. So to access the levers control panel, you just need to look at it and you press P. And as you can see on the left, it is automatically the item that is selected. Now over here, we're going to give this an input signal. Let's call it lever one. Now over here, these are where your output signals are going to go, but you can choose some circuits, but we'll get to that a little later. Now this is going to output lever one signal as soon as it's turned on or off. Now I'm going to set this to the door. Now I look at the door, press P and the door is automatically chosen. Now what I wanted to do is to open and close by selecting the signal. So if I look here, there you go. It does the trick. Now if I was to press I, then it would completely do the opposite. Now it's on and as I turn it off, it will open. Now over here you have a drop down, which is toggle on or off. Toggle, what will happen is as soon as I activate it, it'll open. But instead of closing, Again, when I turn it off, I need to toggle it. And there you go. The other option is on. So when I actually activate the signal, it'll turn on. And no matter what I do, it won't close again. And if I turn it to off, it's pretty much the same thing, but the opposite. As soon as this thing is activated, it's gonna turn off and stay off. These can apply also to the lock and unlock feature. Okay, so now in this room, I've completely inserted all of the possible uh, toggles that you can have here in the signal and sensor block. Over here, you have the usual switch. Over here, you got a sensor which will detect in a line. If I go and select the device, you'll see where it detects. So if I walk in front of that, it'll open the door. Over here you have your motion sensor in which you can use the area in which it detects. To do that, you look at it and press P. Now you have to go into devices menu and over here you have the area it can cover. Now it might be a little hard to see, so what you want to do is get out of there, press P again, and if you're not looking at any other object in particular, it's going to be that item that is still selected. So you can make it bigger, smaller, by choosing to slide these little things there. You can always go with interactive setup. What that will do is it'll give you a little option at the bottom right to show you the controls on how to do that. Hold left control and numpad to make bigger in whichever direction you want. And hold left control and left alt to make it smaller. As such. And when I go enter this little red area, which will not show <laughs> usually, the door will open. Okay, there's a lot of activity going on on the side. What the hell is going on? What the hell are you doing, guys? I'm trying to teach people. Stop it. Get out. Get. Be gone. Yeah, any more? Oh, you little buggers. Come here. There you go. You gotta be quiet now, right? Maybe I should have done this in space. Get over here. Okay. That was a little harsh there, Rakuna. I know, but we're making noise and I'm trying to teach people, okay? All right, so over here we got the trigger plate. This basically is when you step on it, it'll open the door. And as soon as you step off, it deactivates. Now there are other ones, other items here, such as this trap door single use. This could be set as an output. So if you press a switch and you want this to activate, it'll destroy the block. Right now, I'm just going to walk through it and that thing will automatically destroy. As such. There you go. How nice is that? And this is a trapdoor multiple use. You can actually set a signal on that, and I've set one to open the door as soon as I walk near. As such. So this thing, as you get close, it'll open and close automatically. 
it, and it's making an annoying sound as well. Now you might have seen here the way that I've configured it. What I did is I put a signal to all of these items, the plate, the motion, the switch, and the light barrier to OR X OR. So th what this means is if either one is activated, it's going to output another signal that is called door. Now what I did is I did another signal, which you can do. You can actually put many together. So what happens if door is detected or trap door is detected, it opens signal two. This is trap door, as you can see right here. And this right here was set to signal two to follow the signal. And you can also apply that to the lights. Okay, Rakuna, you lost me. That is way too much information. I know, I know. We're just going to go do some basic steps now, all right? Rakuna, what is this? Uh, this is pretty much to show the to or command. Now, I've set the signals to the, both of these levers. One for lever one and one for lever two. Let, let me just delete that so I can kind of show you how it's done. What I wanted to do is to set a to or that means when either one are activated, it'll output the signal. What I can do here is do add circuit. It'll show up on the right as such. Now I'm going to put the first one to lever one and then the other one to lever two. And the output signal will be door open. Now I'm going to go on this door and set this little puppy to open with door open command. So when I flip either switch or even both switch, it's going to leave him open. As soon as both are closed, the door will shut. Now this room is basically the same, except I've set it to two and command. What this does is I need to have both switches for the door signal to be activated. So if I flip only one, it's not going to work, but I need both switches activated to actually open the door. And what the hell is going on here? Both switches are closed and the door is open. That's because this is the N and command. As you can see, 2x and and command. What this means is it's basically the same as and, except it's inverted. It's the same thing as if on my door, I would have set it to invert the command. So to close the door, I'd need both switches to be open and the door is closed. Like I said, if I were to just invert this, let me try this again. If I activated both, it would send another signal. And because this signal is inverted, it just opens it now. And this one is the 2x nor. So it's basically like this signal over here, except you just need to activate one of the switches for the door to close. As such. I could actually do both and the door would remain closed. Now we're going to look at x or. Now what does that do? That means that I only have to have one switch activated for the door to open. If I open up two switches, it won't work. As you can see, it opens. If I open the other one, it won't work. If I close this one, it's open. And if I close both, it remains closed. So as long as one of the switches are activated, the door will open. Why the hell would you use that? Well, there's a lot of people that like making their own POIs. And these type of commands, there might be a little bit more advanced, but people use it. Make more complex POIs. Okay, I guess that makes sense. It does. You must have seen the 4x and, 4x and and, 4x or and, 4x and or. Uh, those are basically the same thing that I have explained, except it uses 4 lever. Uh, like this one. This one has been set to 4 and. That means I need to have all switches activated in order for the door to open. So let's just go for it. Right, move aside, Bart. Just a little bit. There you go. Now, if that was a 4 or, that would have meant that I just needed to have one of the switches activated in order to open. I could actually do that quickly for a demonstration. First of all, let's have all of these switches deactivated. I can go in my P menu and I can actually destroy this. It's gone. So I can put in a 4 or signal. And over here, I'm going to set all four lever signals. And after that, the output signal will be door open. I'm going to go into door signal logic and I'm going to set it to door open. So when either one of these switches is open, the door is going to open as well. There you go. As long as one of them is open, it's all going to be okay. Now over here, I've set a delay. What that means is I've selected here a two and circuit, which says that when I press lever one and lever two, a timer signal will be activated. Then timer is sent here to delay three seconds to then activate the door signal. 
and the door here is set to open at the door signal. So let's just do this. Switch one, switch two, and then we wait three seconds. And there you go. This is how you use delay. You can actually customize how much time you want to put in your delay here. What the hell is this, Rakuna? Why is the door open and why is there a creepy hallway on the other side? Uh, it, you'll see. It's all part of the set and reset lash. What the hell is that? Well, let's just walk through. You'll see. Yep. So over here, what happened is I set a signal that as soon as I enter the room, the doors will close. As you can see, I've put a sensor here. The sensor was set to activate as soon as I walked in the area and that activated trap. Now, if I look at the door, it is set to trap. And that one as well. Now, how do I get out, you ask? Well, there is a release trigger, which is this one in here, which opens the door all over again. If I walk into sensor again, it won't close the door anymore since this one is activated. But if I were to shut it off and do it all over again, there you go. It will work. I could have changed this for a motion sensor or maybe one of these uh, light barriers. And that would have automatically reset the trap. Let's try this for fun. Let's put a light barrier. There you go. We'll call this a barrier. There you go. And over here, we're going to set this to barrier. Okay, now I've reset the trap. Let's walk into the sensor again. And there you go. Doors are closed. And doors are now closed open. Why is it freaking night? So this is how you set a trap for someone. Yeah, that that is one of the ways. It works. Nice. Okay, don't get any ideas, Bart. And there is one last one here that I haven't covered. So I'm going to insert inverter. Basically what it does, it's it's a little bit like using the N and or N or. It, it just inverts the signal. So right here, I'm going to set this to lever one and I'm going to put this the door. I'm going to set the door to open under that signal, but the only thing is it's going to be inverted now. So if I close it, the door opens and now it closes as I activate the lever. So it's it's just an inverter. Now on most complex ship, you're going to have a bunch of sensors that you can set up. Lots of signals and lots of circuits, and you can do a whole bunch of combinations, which can be quite interesting. All right, so I brought the Darius in, and I will do a custom sensor. Over here, we got the landing gear. Now, those can be used to actually send a signal out. I'm going to write the signal land, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these doors to actually open only when I land. Now, ramps are quite complicated. For some reason, you got to invert them for them to work. Otherwise, when you land, that thing will close, and when I'm in the air, it'll keep on working. Now, what I could do, just for the hell of it, is I'm going to set a delay also. Uh, once I land, three seconds after, my thrusters will deactivate. Now, I can select my thrusters and set them all to thruster. For the purpose of the tutorial, I'm not going to remove the bottom ones, otherwise my ship won't be able to lift off afterwards. <laughs> but you can do that like for a couple of the thrusters, the one, uh, the upward thrusters, the side thrusters, and the front thrusters. So let's do a little test. Let's land a ship. The landing gears are down, and my thruster shut off after three seconds. And this way I can actually use my ramp to go down on the planet and it's a soft landing. Now again, if I go back in the air, boom, everything closes and in three seconds my thrusters will reactivate. There you go. And off we go. Well, Rakuna, that was some complex stuff. Uh, I might not get it at first, but I guess with practice I'll be good, right? Yeah, you'll be good. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. Maybe I can give you a hand. So guys, just have fun, explore. If you see that the object you're looking at has a TX signal, it's because it's able to send out a signal for the circuits. If it has an open, close, and unlock, unlock, that means it's ready to receive a signal. So just have fun, test around, and uh, play around with it. You'll you'll get a hang of it. it. Might take a little bit of time. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any comments as well. So thank you guys very much for watching this episode of Imperium Tutorial. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps out. So until next time, guys, take care and stay safe. Rakuna out.